www.paulrance.com. So excited that you're here with us today. We are going to be talking about overlock surging and cover him on sportswear. It's so hot right now outside. So <laughs> I need to wear some sportswear and uh, why not just do it yourself? You know, it's May, everyone's posting their me made and I hope that this is super inspiring to you and helps you get those sergers out and get start started surging and using cover him. So uh, just a little reminder, every live broadcast that we do, we give away a $100 allbrands.com e-gift card. So please get those comments in, get those questions in. We may ask them live and answer them. And uh, good luck, we'll be announcing the winner at the end of this broadcast. So today we have an amazing person who, uh, I know we've done a few lives with this gentleman and he is so wonderful. His name is Tim Bond. He works with All Brands and Juki and we're just so excited to have him. So, um, oh, we may have a special guest at the end, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so let's bring in, uh, oh, let's say hey to a few folks. Let's see. Lori from Wyoming, good to see you. And Stephanie, good afternoon to you as well and Mary from Michigan. Ah, Josie from Maryland, good to see you again. Beth from Ohio, oh, all over the place. Karen from Michigan, and Terry from our Lafayette store. Oh my goodness. All right, well, let's bring in Tim, see what he's up to these days. Hey, Tim. Hey, Barbara, how are you? I'm doing excellent. You got a new studio. Yes, I do. You know, I filmed in my sewing area, which is actually like half apartment, but it wasn't very conducive because I have a tendency to sit. And when I sit, I chat too much. <laughs> so this way I can stand and we can focus on what we want to show you, which is our wonderful Juki products. Yes. And I love Juki is well known in the industry as being the top industrial manufacturer. Um, what is the saying? If you're wearing a garment, there's a 90% chance it was sewn on a Juki. That's about right these days. You'd be surprised. We are still the number one industrial sewing machine manufacturer in the world, but we have a good quality home sewing product line as well. So, mm -hmm. but you can't go wrong with it. It's great. <laughs> They're easy to use. They're fun to use. And as you know, Barbara, I'm a lazy sewer. So anything that Juki can do for me that I don't have to do, I am much better off with. <laughs> I am lazy too. Glad I'm not the only one. I heard you were a musician, uh, not a musician, a magician. Oh yeah, you know. So. <laughs> and you have a trick to show us, right? I have we're a trick gonna to make show. So Tim. it all relates to sportswear. All right. <laughs> we're going to make Tim disappear. <laughs> we're going to make me disappear. So we're doing sportswear. It's fun to do on, on your Juki Serger and on your cover hem machine. And so I thought, let's go find a skirt or something to make that has a time frame to it and see if we can't whip up a sample to see if I can't keep within that time frame. How many of you know the 20 minute shirt, the 30 minute skirt, the 45 minute whatever? So I went and I found a skirt that was a 30 minute skirt. Well, it took me 42 minutes. But now I counted threading my machines and changing my colors and doing all the things besides, not just cutting and sewing. So what do you think? Did I do okay? That is so cute. Oh my goodness, I love it. And that fabric is so fun. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> I love you, Tim. You are so funny. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed that. Tim's magic trick. That made my year. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> well, we're Very nice on. on the skirt. Very nice on the skirt. And what, what material did you use for that? This is just a jersey knit. I went to my local store. And I couldn't find anything I liked. So of course, then I had to go shop online and you never really know what you're going to get. I, I'm looking at a picture that's this big and I'm ordering something and you're like, oh, that looks really pretty. So in reality, I didn't think that these, they didn't have a measuring tape for this print. So I didn't think these flowers were quite this big. 
I yeah, that's were, something not, to think about. Print size. size. Yeah, th we have a lot to talk about with fabric. And I actually have a little presentation that I put together for everyone. So maybe we can bring that up. Sure. Just a little bit about sportswear and fabric and different needles that you need to be using uh, for that. So, and Tim, please feel free to chime in if you have any fun thing to say. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, so Tim, you know this. Whenever you're looking at materials for sportswear, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that that has a four-way stretch. So it stretches from left to right and up to down. <laughs> the last thing that you want is when you make something that's form-fitting to your body to only have stretch in one direction. So that's very important for sportswear, uh, which is why spandex is often added because spandex provides a ton of stretch. Mm -hmm. So not all fabrics are four-way stretch and that stretch varies with and against the grain. Um, and just make sure when you're testing it out in the store, what is your stretch? And then what is your recovery? A lot of natural fibers don't have the same, it doesn't go back to the original size after you stretch it out really far as easily as some of our synthetic fibers. So uh, yeah, so there's two different kinds of fabric you're generally gonna see when you're shopping in the stores. There's uh, knits and wovens. So uh, your rule of thumb for sportswear, stick with the knits. The knits are the stretchy fabrics. Woven is not going to give you stretch, maybe a little bit if you turn it sideways and, and go on the bias, but uh, generally your wovens are, are not the way that you wanna go for that. All right, so different types of fibers that you can use for uh, your material. So uh, I've listed some natural fibers. I, in particular, am a big fan of natural uh, fibers because there's a renewable resource. Um, cotton, bamboo, wool. I just like the feeling of something that came from the earth, I guess. Uh, when I'm wearing it. Um, so bamboo, uh, I actually just did um, a really nice, uh, I guess like unitard for wearing at home, uh, just lounging about. Uh, and it's nice because it's very soft. Uh, bamboo is wicking and it, uh, it actually has some UV protection uh, in it, in the fibers naturally. Uh, wool is surprising because the first thing Right, Tim, when you think of wool, you're like, oh my gosh, that's gonna be so hot, right? right. Wrap up <laughs> and it's gonna be too hot. But remember, like many fabrics, they come in different weights. So you exactly. can get some very nice, lightweight wool that's in a stretch fabric. It's been woven correctly and you can use it as sportswear or anything else you want to. So you just have to keep an eye out for it. Just because it says wool on it, don't discount it. Exactly. Um, and so it's uh, it's moisture wicking. So for those of you who are quilters out there and if you've used wool batting, it's actually uh, the batting in your wool for your quilts is very, uh, it pulls the moisture from your body. Um, and it's just really nice and, and breathable. And it actually is naturally antibacterial, which is really good for sportswear because, um, you know, if you leave it, hanging out on the in the basket for too long it may g get nasty but uh cotton um we don't want to say absolutely no to cotton um, cotton is more absorbent than synthetics you definitely don't want to make a i wouldn't make a bathing suit out of cotton but for a a, a workout shirt i would definitely consider uh cotton and usually if you find the cotton it's got something else with it to make it stretch yeah Okay, so uh, bio-based, all right. So this is so funny because I always heard like, okay, so there's polyester thread, there's rayon thread, and uh, rayon is a uh, bio-based fiber. So um, it's regenerated from purified cellulose from plant sources. So it's like wood chips that they, I guess, grind up together and make it into a fiber. And so it's, it is, uh, it's not like the pure form of the fiber that it comes from, but it's, uh, it's derived from uh, natural 
sources. So here is a full list of those. Uh, rayon and uh, modal and viscose are kind of very similar to each other, um, but tensile is more like bamboo. Um, it's very similar to polyester and durable. And uh, yeah, so, so these are definitely uh, ones to consider there. All right, and then you get into your synthetics. <laughs> So I don't know, like sometimes, Tim, I think of like the 70s polyester pantsuits. I'm like, no way am I going to make anything out of that. But that's not necessarily the case with sportswear. Uh, generally with, um, I would say spandex is probably one of the best, uh, one of the best options that you have out there because it's so stretchy. It stretches up to six times its normal length and it goes back to place. So it has that recovery in it. It wicks moisture, dries quickly, and um, you can have like a full range of motion. So if you're doing yoga or anything that's like you're, you're putting your leg up here and all that, like you'll be able to uh, move very easily in that. Do you have a particular favorite synthetic? Actually, I used to like the polyester, but since they've stopped making Shally, which is a rayon cotton blend, I had to find something else that gave me that feel. And believe it or not, the new spandex Lycras are coming in lightweight, very, very smooth, blended, very comfortable. And they feel cool when you first put them on, but they don't stay cool and they don't get hot when you're doing things with it, which is very important because you want things to help you stay cool and not get heated up. So the spandex Lycra is a good option these days for a lot of sportswear. Yeah, and weave, I think, accounts a lot for that. Weave and the uh, density of the fiber um, that's knitted together, um, those are all things to think about. So, all right, so blends. So <laughs> if you go in your closet and shop around and look at the tags inside, you'll notice that most of the items in your closet are a blend. Um, and generally, you know, I... Uh, I like um, cotton and bamboo that are blended with spandex because you get that natural soft fiber, um, but it also has that super duper stretch stretchiness and recovery. But um, uh, for yoga pants, uh, I would suggest um, nylon, polyester, bamboo, or lycra because they're durable, stretchy, moisture wicking, and comfortable. So, and you know, uh, Tim, when you make sportswear, you always make it like a little bit smaller than what your size. I mean, like, so that it accounts for the stretch. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> so yeah, so you want it to like form fit your body. So right. you want to um, measure how much it stretches uh, and account for that when you use your patterns and things like that. So sports bras, I'd suggest cotton like or spandex. Uh, it offers excellent shape retention, but you need like a, a lot of support there. So um, yeah. All right. So weight, fabric weight. Um, this is always, always something that's a little confusing when you're shopping online. Um, and we've noticed that uh, some retailers are moving to physical weight per yard now. So the fiber, um, the fiber actually weighs differently. So that will make a difference in, in the, in the weight because synthetics weigh, uh, less than my, uh, natural fibers. Correct. So, yeah. So, uh, if you're doing like something that you want to have drape, I would select a lightweight material. If you're wanting something that's going to give you support and hug you tightly, I would go to medium to heavyweight um, on that. Okay, needles. Well, now we're <laughs> going to get to the point of things. <laughs> yes, get to the point. Or actually, you don't want a real sharp point on these needles, right? Well, you know, it kind of depends on the machine. But I'm going to be very honest with you. When I sew, I like to make sure that my needles and my fabrics match. There's nothing worse than getting yourself a nice piece of fabric and using the wrong needle and ending up with undesirable results from your stitching. Now, the only limitation you'll find with needles sometimes is whether or not your machine, your serger, your overcasting machines, your sewing machines will accept that particular style of needle. 
most household sewing machines, you can put any style needle into it. It's kind of the brand or the make of needle that you have to watch. Sergers and cover stitch machines, they can be a little bit pickier about the needles, mainly because of size. They don't like really big needles. They don't like really small needles. But I still base the needle on what I'm sewing on. So if I'm sewing on a jersey or a knit, I'm going to use the appropriate needle, which, depending on the weight of the knit, might be a light ball point or a regular ball point, or it could be a stretch needle that has a super sharp point. So you actually have three types of needles in there to sew on knits with. You need to figure out the best one for the fabric that you're working on. Yeah. So obviously when you're working with a knit, if you've ever knitted, it's, it's, it, it's not several um, pieces of, uh, <laughs> of uh, yarn or, or thread with one uh, other thread going up through it. It's, it's one piece that uh, loops together. So you definitely don't want to shred that thread. So a ballpoint needle will actually kind of shift that thread kind of to the side without puncturing and piercing it and possibly breaking it, which could create a hole in your garment, right, Tim? That's correct. That's why you always want to test your garment with your needle to make sure you have the right needle to use. There's nothing worse than getting into the project and you've done the entire garment and then you go back and you look at the seams and there's little holes throughout every needle <laughs> because it's penetrated through the fibers and created a hole. It didn't separate the fibers to create the stitch. So that is one of the things that you need to keep in mind. Am I going to use this needle with this fabric? Well, it might work okay, but am I going to be happy with the results? So I always say test everything with the needle that you want to use to make sure you're happy with the results, which doesn't mean just sew a straight line. It means to put two pieces of fabric together. Sew a sample on your sewing machine with that needle. If that needle will fit into your serger or your cover hem, sew on that machine with it. You want to test every stitch that you're going to use on that garment with that needle to make sure that it's going to give you the desired results. Yeah. Okay. And the next slide we have is thread. So <laughs> I like this, this little topic here because um, I'm a big fan of polyester thread for garment construction. It is the most, what, what's the word, um, durable, mm -hmm. stronger, uh, it's very strong. It's not going to degrade over time uh, like a rayon or cotton would. Um, so I definitely suggest polyester for most um, searching on sportswear. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to kind of um, do a specialty stitch or have um, a rolled hem that's filled in, you can use a woolly nylon. Now that is a... Um, it's like a puffy thread. It has some stretch to it, um, but it kind of, of fills in the stitches, the, the open area, right? Right. That is a, just imagine it's like clouds and you're trying to put it through the machine and it just kind of floats through the machine, but it stretches out. And when you're done, it relaxes. So here, here we are back to that stretch theory again about having your fabric stretch out and come back to normal. You're stretching out the woolly nylon or the stretch thread and when you're done coming through the machine and it relaxes around the edge, it fills in back to close to its normal state, which is a little puffy, a little soft feel to it. I happen yeah. to like them also. They're fun to play with. and They give you a nice finish against your skin. So that's one other thing to not worry about if you're using some of these stretch threads. How is it going to feel against my skin? Can I use it on the inside seam and have it not irritate me? And 99% of the time you can get away with using those particular threads on the inside. They'll be nice and smooth against your skin. Yeah, I agree. And, and that's something definitely to consider, especially when you're wearing a tight uh, garment, which most sportswear is. So there's another kind of uh, thread that just came out. It's called stretch thread. Mm -hmm. um, so both of these types of thread you want to use in your loopers, but not in the needle. And if you've ever tried to thread a needle with these specialty threads, it's, it's probably not going to work for you. It's very difficult. Um, so just use those in the, in the lower, uh, an upper looper and then just polyester in the needles. Correct, Tim? Correct. Perfect. All right. Well, I think that's it for our little presentation there. I wanted to show everybody, I have some examples of some uh, just sportswear that I have at my house and we can look at some of the stitches that 
uh, are used for that. So we'll switch cameras and then I'll meet you over there. Okay. All right, can you see me now? Can you see me now, Tim? I see an orange field. Okay, perfect. <laughs> this is oh, it. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> All right. So today we're talking about sergers, but we're also talking about cover hem machines. And if you go into your closet and look at most of your garments, we'll have this stitch on it. This is a cover hem stitch. You can have a two needle or some of them have three needles, but this is basically, it, it's for the bottom of a shirt or the sleeves of your shirt, um, the cuffs of pants. And then when you turn it over, it has a, like a loopy thing uh, underneath. <laughs> so I know Tim that you're gonna be showing us the uh, a really cool guide that uh, mm -hmm. Juki has for this stitch. Yes. but. And you should stretch. You should pull that so you can show the folks that it actually stretches with the garment. That is why the cover hem stitch is a good stitch and a good machine to have if you're going to get into doing sportswear. Now, that's not to say it's the only reason to get one, but that's a good reason. In today's uh, sewing environment, we're doing more stretch again. We're doing sportswear. We're doing things for everybody. It also gives you that nice professional finished look, which I think is very important to things that you make today. You should take pride in them and get as close to that professional look as you can get. Some of us can do it pretty well. Some of us need a little work. Yeah, <laughs> I need a lot of work. <laughs> so another stitch that you'll see in like all of your sportswear is this one. Is this the four thread overlock? So this one you do your like side seams with. Um, this one's on a shirt you can um this is the top portion of the shirt like the uh the sleeve area uh underneath here connecting it together is a four thread overlock stitch so this is a very secure stitch so if you're stretching it to its limit it's going to keep it all together this is a very secure stitch your most common stitch that you're ever going to use right here this one. Um, and here's another one that's fun, Tim. This is a, uh, actually, this is like kind of like a binding of some sort along the collar. Right. And I see this on a lot of like tank tops and things like that. But this, um, I'm sure it's surged underneath. I think I can feel it. But um, on the back, you can turn it over. And this was not using a straight stitch on a sewing machine. You can see it's a little bit thicker on the back. This is called a chain stitch, and this is actually done on your serger. Well, on some sergers. Yes, some sergers. So this is the same stitch that you'll see like on a bag of dog food, um, cat food bags. You know, you can pull the string and it just kind of keeps on coming out, right? right. So um, you definitely want to make sure that when you secure your chain stitch that it's um, wherever it's connected is very secure. So like this is where it ends. Like it is definitely connected because you don't. And one thing that's really good, Tim, if you make a mistake on surging, it's so easy to rip out. Mm -hmm. Have you done that? Yeah. Oh, no, I've never had to rip anything out. <laughs> It just like you just take a few out and it unravels, which is great. On the chain stitch, that is very easy to do. You know, you yeah. used that reference for that that the bag of dog food, but you know what? I bought cat food and it has Velcro on it now. So we might what? have to change that reference to like a <laughs> kitty litter bag or something, because it still has the chain stitch on the top. <laughs> So here's another one um, that's really cool. So if you have a serger, but not a cover hem machine, um, you can, and you want like a flat seam lock. This is a flat lock stitch. And um, it's not the best well done one, but you can see it has you, um, it has the serge stitch here, which basically you surge it like this. And then when you open it up and pull it apart, Mm -hmm. you'll see these ladders on the other side. And some people use like different color threads there and it 
gives it kind of a decorative look. But that's just another option for cover hem that you can use on a serger. That's actually a, a good example to show if they don't have a cover stitch machine, but they want to be able to finish it and have a little bit more interest to their hem than just doing a regular straight stitch across the hem. So that's a nice option to play with. Almost every serger, three thread, four thread, or five thread serger can do a flat lock. You might have to look in your book to figure out how to set it up. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely have to set up these different stitches. So here's another example of um, a, a unique stitch that I like on sportswear a lot. So this is like joining two different materials together. And it looks like it's just stop, top stitched on the top, but they did a serge stitch and then they folded it over and then top stitched it down and it gives it this really nice um, look to it. Here's another example of a cover hem right here. This is one of your most popular stitches. I don't know how I could do <laughs> sportswear without cover hem. Yeah. And then they just repeated this same like serge stitch here. And then they top stitched it with the sewing machine across. And it looks really nice. That so, you know, Barbara, that top stitching gives you two reasons for it. One is the decorative element to give you that nice finished look on it. But the back side of it is to tame down that seam. You want to lay down flat. Maybe it's a shoulder strap. You don't want that seam to flip up underneath. It might cause your shoulder strap to rise. So they top stitch it down flat so it lays against you plainly. You find that that's a little bit of a nice feature to have in some of the better made garments when they go back and they top stitch on the knits just to make the seams lay flat. Yeah. So to go backwards, I was going to show you this first, but this is a bamboo that I just purchased um, that I absolutely love. Um, it has tons of stretch on it. It's super, super soft, but you can see, like we were talking about two-way versus four-way stretch earlier, like it stretches from right to left, but it also stretches up to down. And you'll notice sometimes, um, and you can measure it, like which way does it stretch more? And then you can uh, decide which direction you wanna cut it out for your um, garment, depending on which directional stretch has more give and recovery. So, well, Tim, I think um, I've spent a lot of time talking about that. I hope that gives <laughs> you all some basics there, but we're going to go back to you so that you can show us um, that MO2000 serger that you have okay. and stitching on the cover hem. Okay. So I'm going to switch cameras in just a second, but we're going to talk about the MO2000 and we're going to talk about the MCS1700. And I just want to give you some hints about them because remember, I'm lazy. I'm a lazy sewer. So anything the machine can do for me or make my task more enjoyable, I'm all for. Well, one of the things on the MO2000 is the fact that it has air threading. What does the air threading mean? Well, it means that I don't have to mess with a bunch of little loops or little bends or nicks to put my thread through. I can use the air threading system. It's got tubes that I'm going to put the thread into. I'm going to push the button and it's going to thread the, the loopers for me. Now, I said loopers because our machine will thread both the upper looper and the lower looper at the same time. So you're not having to thread one and then thread the other. Also, ours runs by pressing a button, it runs the motor, the motor pumps air, the air is what pumps the thread through the channels, so it threads it for you. We're going to set that up in a closer shot so you can see that, but I think things like that are important, especially, like I said, because I'm lazy. The more things the machine can do for me to make my task easier and more fun, the better off. But there's one other feature that really, really draws me to the MO2000, and that is the LCD display. We're going to take a closer look at that also, but this gives me information on how to set the machine for the stitch patterns. How many of you have memorized every page in your book on how to set a particular stitch on your serger? Anybody? Probably not. I certainly don't. I don't use every stitch, but every once in a while I might use a stitch that I haven't used in a long time, and that information is right here on the face of the machine for me, so I know exactly. Just touch it up. 
follow the directions for it, and set the machine. And I can do a rolled hem. I can do a two-thread rolled hem. Maybe I haven't done one ever, but the machine's display is going to give me that information. So those are the two things that really make using the MO2000 fun and easy. So let's take a look at the MCS1700 cover hem, because this machine doesn't do a cover hem stitch, so I have to have a counterpart, because remember, I want to be able to do cover hem cover stitching. I'm doing sportswear, I'm doing finished work on garments that I want to have that twin needle look that I only get from doing a cover hem machine. Well, one of the nice features with our MCS 1700 is it comes with a guide. And we're going to take a look at this guide also, but I'm going to show you how to use the guide also. Hopefully I can get the camera in tight enough that you'll be able to see it. This guide actually comes with the MCS 1700 QVP model. So you don't have to worry about buying it or saying, oh, you know, I saw that guide on the, on the Facebook Live and I don't remember what it's called, but I want it with the machine. Well, you just buy the 1700, it comes with it. So if Barbara, if your folks will give me a moment to change camera angles. Yeah, we'll I'll actually come up. Here on our MO2000. <laughs> yeah, I'll come up and say hey to a few folks. Carrie, it's so good to see you in the comments. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see you. Um, yeah, Rita, hey, thank you so much. I'm so happy that this is informative. This is just like very basic class. So if you enjoy it, guys, let us know and we may do a more advanced one next time. Uh, but yes, the air threading serger is phenomenal. There is like, it, it just takes like setting up your serger can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming um, just because you have to change different settings on it and just to make it so much easier the air threading uh, just is such a breeze <laughs> so it looks like Tim is ready oh hey Joe <laughs> so we'll go to Tim and see about that air threading all right so I've got a nice close-up here for you because I want you to see that the mechanisms are actually all hidden all you're really looking for are the air tubes because the thread is going to magically pass through everything else and come out the other end of the looper for us. So to stage it, it's very simple. I have tubes that I need to connect across here. I simply flip the lever and turn the hand wheel if I'm not in the right position and the tubes jump across to fill that gap. We have to have that gap when the machine runs because our loopers are going to move. If they can't move, they can't stitch. So we make it so that it jumps across to fill the gap for our air threading system. Now, we simply lay our threads into the top. We have a click and then we bring it down and you're gonna wanna pull out just enough thread, probably about 10 to 12 inches maybe, so that you can put just a little bit into each one of these holes. Now I have a lower looper and I have an upper looper and hopefully you'll be able to see the threads I picked on the screen because I tried to pick colors that were visible against the white background. So I'm just putting a little bit of red thread into the tube. Hopefully I've got enough. If I don't, I can come up here and pull down some more thread to give myself a little extra bit of length. And I want to make sure I'm not caught on anything because catching it, oh, let me tell you, it'll stop and you'll go, why didn't it come out? And then you'll look over and you'll see why, because it got caught on something. So I'm going to do the same thing with my upper looper. I'm going to pull out a length of thread. I'm going to try and put this little blue thread into my little tube here. Sometimes my fingers are a little coarse and it takes me a little extra time. If you have smooth fingers, it works really well. If you have coarse fingers, sometimes the thread sticks to them. But you know what? We have tweezers so that if I need to, I can pull my tweezers out and use the tweezers to help me get it into position. Now, it looks like all my threading is good and you're gonna watch over here, but you know what? The magic is gonna happen over here. So I'm gonna press the button and you can see here is my lower looper red thread and here right here is my upper looper blue thread and that was very difficult wasn't it barbara so when i'm ready to sew i'm going to retract the air tubes so that now I can actually have the system move the only thing i have le left to do is like a normal serger and that is to take my looper thread my lower looper thread and put it up on top and run it to the back over my upper looper. So my lower looper thread comes up and over the top of my upper looper. Oh, but I have needles to do. Well, needles on a serger, they're kind of hard to thread sometimes. But you know what? Our MO2000 has needle threaders. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna show you 
that we can actually take advantage of needle threading technology because they are so easy to use and we let somebody else worry about the mechanics on it. And of course, my thread is not cooperating with my fingers. I'm sure you never have this problem. Oh, no, Tim, never. No. <laughs> hey, um, we had a few questions while you're doing that. Um, what types of specialty threads um, do you need the um, that little special tool, the guide tool, to go through the air threading mechanism? You know, that is a great question. And we provide a threading wire with the machine. So when you want to use Lily Nylon, or some of those stretchy threads. I remember I said they're like clouds. They mm -hmm. don't have a body to them for the air to push through. So the air just kind of passes around them. So they don't really work quite well with air threading, but we do have a threading wire that works great. So you put the threading wire through, it has a loop on the back end, you pull that thread through the loop and you pull it out the other side and it threads the machine for you. Perfect. It's almost as easy as air threading, except you do have to manually put that wire through first. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to step over to the other side of the machine. So it's just, I have a, a thread here and I'm going to pull it into the guide and I'm going to pull it into my thread guide. Now I'm going to lower my foot because I want to have a little extra room to work here. Hoping you can see this, but this is my needle threader positioner. I have a left and a right positioning on it. So I'm going to put it into the right position and I'm going to push down on my needle threader. It's going to lock it into position for me. Now, if I'm not in the right position for my needle threader to work, I could actually damage my needle threader because remember, it's a stylus that's coming from the back, coming through the eye of the needle. So we always want to make sure that our stylus is going to pass through correctly. And there's settings on the knob over here that you would look at to make sure that they match. So if they don't match, you want to make sure you turn them so that those match so that they match appropriately for the needle threader to work. Now that I moved it out of position, I need to put it back into position. So now it's gonna slide down, snap into position. I don't have to hold it. Now I can manage just my thread. All I need to do is get my thread to snap in between the four prongs and get grabbed by the stylus. I have never tried to do this from this side before. Now I just pull it through and you can see here, I have a loop through my needle. So I just repeat that process for the other side. Now my needles are threaded. It's so nice to have a needle threader on a serger. So nice. So, so you call it a stylus, but that little hook that goes through the eye of the needle for mm -hmm. the needle threader, yes. I feel like it's like a shepherd's hook. That's like, you know, the one that pulls the guy off the stage whenever he's taken up. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I know the exact one you're talking about. I see it coming now for me, Barbara. But yes, it is. It's basically just a little hook that comes through. It's got a little notch on the end of it. So when the thread comes underneath, it gets caught and it pulls it back through the eye of the needle. Actually, it's the same stylus on almost every sewing machine out there that has a needle threader. Mm -hmm. So And Tim, these machines use the universal... Also, style of sewing machine needle, correct? Yes. Our machines that use regular wonderful. household needles. So you don't have to worry about buying, oh, I have to buy a particular needle for my serger. It's not needed on our Juki sergers. Yeah. So you're going to have a lot more options than other brands are going to have. And you can, you can get the specialty type needles, um, which is perfect. So now I'm going to do my other needle because I know you're going to want to watch me sew. Once again, I'm just following the path up and around. You see how easy that is? I just laid it in. Once I come down here, I want to grab the guide over here on my side. Come out from the outside. Grab the wire loop. I want to make sure my needle threader is on the right side so I can thread, I mean, on the left side so I can thread my left needle. Once again, the difficult task of being on the side. And there's my loop. So you can see how easy it was to thread the serger. It took me longer to talk than it did for me to actually thread the serger, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so easy. And so tell us about, because I'm very familiar with the MO1000 that I have here. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the QVP model, which is the dealer only uh, model, and it has some extra 
things with it. So I see it has that nice LCD touch screen on it. Oh, Can you tell yes. us about that? You know what? I'm going to tilt the camera up just a little bit. So we're going to be a little shaky for a second here. That's not me. That's just the camera moving. And I'm not having an earthquake, so we're good. <laughs> so you can see here, these are all the stitch patterns that are built into the programming for the machine. So instead of having to go to the book, I can simply scroll through the screen by using my arrows here and find the pattern I want. So if I wanted pattern number four, pattern number eight, I would simply hit my arrows until I see pattern four. Right now I'm on pattern one, which is four thread overlock. Right here, I see pattern number one, but as I scroll through them, two, three, four, that's the pattern I want to use. Now I have information on the screen for me to look at, and I can actually make notes also. So I can make changes. I'm not stuck with just the settings. Maybe I'm using a specialty thread. So you're talking about specialty needles and specialty threads. I might be using a specialty thread. So I want to change the memory to remind me of what tensions I found work best for that specialty thread. So that's what the, the memory is allowing me to do also. So here's the actual setting screen. So you can see it's telling me which needle position. It's giving me thread tension recommendations. It's telling me if my stitch finger needs to be up or down, if my dis if my um, differential system is supposed to be engaged or supposed to be N for neutral. So I have everything I need right here on the screen to tell me how to set the rest of the machine so that I can enjoy what I came to do, and that is to use my serger. Pretty simple, huh, Barbara? Uh, that is so much easier than pulling out the manual and looking down and looking up. And <laughs> I swear, I get dizzy whenever I have to look down at the paper and then look back up at the machine and make all of those different setting adjustments. That is phenomenal. So as you can see, I've got four threads. I've got everything threaded and I'm actually ready to sew. I just need to do one more thing. And this is one thing you should do on every serger. And that is to verify that your interaction of your threads is proper by turning it by hand to start with. Don't just step on the pedal. Always check with a few turns by hand to see that your stitch formation is gonna form against the stitch finger. Let me see if I can tilt the camera down a minute here and we'll see about showing you how that's actually gonna be working. Maybe, here we go. So I teach 45 degree angle out the side here, put my finger on the threads. That way I can lower my foot and I can turn the hand wheel on the other side so I can watch the interaction. Now keep in mind, I'm doing this from behind the machine, but it's gonna be the same theory because I'm simply watching it take its first couple of stitches to make sure that they're gonna interact properly and wrap over here at the edge. If I don't see them wrapping at the edge, it means I probably did something wrong. On this machine, it means I probably forgot to lay my, up, my lower looper on top of my upper looper or I didn't thread my needles. So those are the things that you want to look at on any serger before you just step on the pedal and make it run. There's nothing worse than setting up your serger, stepping on the pedal and having it do what, Barbara? Break your thread. Mm -hmm. Because what do you have to do? Rethread the machine from scratch. Oh, mm -hmm. but wait a minute. I have an air thread serger. I have a closed path for my thread to travel. So if I break my lower looper or my upper looper, I can just reset the air thread and let it rethread. Don't need to worry about going one, two, three, four again. I can just rethread that particular path because they are closed. They only interact with the needles in one position. So I can't over thread or lock the threads by having the, the needle threads wrapped around something. So I'm gonna step around over here a moment. I'm giving a few more turns by hand so I can verify what I'm seeing because standing behind it, I couldn't actually see. Now, we do have safety features. Barbara, you know about safety features on your server? I do. And we actually sometimes get some calls uh, when customers first get their machine saying, hey, I'm stepping on the foot pedal and it's not running. Well, you have to close the door. And that's for just the safety of the user <laughs> so, so that, uh, yeah. So it's both doors on the MO1000 and the MO2000. Both doors have to be closed or the machine will not operate. Yeah. So let's see how, how good I did or how bad I did, depending. I got to tell you, the Juki machines have 
for as long as I've been in the industry and my parents have been in the industry since the 70s, um, Juki has made the best sergers on the market and they're just phenomenal. So here you can see my first sample stitch. See if I can change the camera angle a little bit for us so we can get a better view on it. Look at that. Gorgeous. That's and that's the back. So what you're looking at on the back is the lower looper. And you have little dots. Those are your needle threads. On the top, you have your upper looper. And then you have needle threads. And those are the lines. So if you're looking at loops, you need to figure out, this is why we use multiple color when we're trying to test our machines. You can determine which one is not set correctly. And then you simply come up and you make an adjustment at the dial at the top. Pretty simple, huh? Oh, yeah. So any questions about our MO2000 serger? Um, we've been answering most of them in the notes. I don't see any um, currently that we haven't answered yet already. So I think that we're good. Okay. I would love to see that um, cover him machine that you have. <laughs> We're going to get to that in just a second. But okay. Jane, Barbara, you mentioned feet before. Oh yeah, I did. There Let me are... show some. You want me to show some feet that come with this? Uh, sure. That not come with that are available as an optional accessory with this machine. Certainly, that'd be great because yes. remember, what did I say at the beginning? I'm lazy. Machines <laughs> can do things. Some of the feet we have can make some of those tasks so much easier. The elasticator foot is one of them. It looks kind of daunting when you first look at it, but once you put it on and you figure out that, oh, I have to put the elastic into here and adjust the screw on it, it'll stretch the elastic for me. So it's actually doing what? Saving me effort. So I know the stretch will always be the same because the pressure is gonna be the same. How many of us hold the elastic and we stitch up to our fingers and then we stretch the elastic and we stitch up to our fingers and we stretch the elastic and we stitch up to our fingers? Are we sure that the, we have stretched the elastic the same amount every time? Probably not. That's why the elasticator foot is a great foot to have if you're doing a lot of elastic work. If you're just doing one or two things, it may not be a great foot for you. But remember, it's always good to have something you might need than to wish for something you don't have and need. Exactly. So um, we'll come to my uh, MO1000 that I have. This is the other um, option for air threading that uh, Tim was showing. So this one does have the air threading mechanisms on it. It is a little lower price. It doesn't have the uh, screen here that the MO2000 QVP machine had. So I'm gonna be showing you this amazing uh, foot kit that is available for the MO1000 and MO2000 uh, machine. There's eight feet in this kit. I'll show you, I'll demonstrate three to you today and then um, I'll tell you the rest that's in there. So it's a great price when you purchase it with the machine. I think you get a little bit of a discount. So if you're interested, if you have this machine and you want more feet, um, just click the shop products uh, button in the description of this video. So the first um, thing that I'm going to show is the elasticator foot. So that is for attaching elastic to a garment. So that foot looks like this. So here's the front of it. It actually has a little screw right here. That can, let me know if y'all can see that. Um, so it's adjustable left to right and it opens up in the front. So any um, uh, elastic that's as wide as this opening can go in there. So basically you just feed your elastic through like so and you adjust this little mechanism to hug it in place like that and then this little screw provides tension on that depending on how uh, how much tension you want on your um, elastic and then you put it on your machine and then you surge the edge of your material like this and it attaches the elastic 
like so. And it is so super secure and it looks so much nicer. It's more consistent than if you were gonna use a zigzag on a sewing machine. It's just really nice to have. So that's the elasticator foot Barbara, that is included. Too easy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, all right, so the next one we have is the it is the piping foot. So it looks like this. And you'll see underneath there's like a groove that you can put your piping through. So I found some piping. Uh, you can use like thread, cord, whatever. Um, and you can just create your own piping and it's super secure. So you don't have to worry about uh, it coming undone. You just put your piping through your little piece of fabric here and then you can put the foot on the machine let it rest on the edge here and you're going to have a consistent cut off on this side as it goes all the way through and imagine okay back to sportswear do you know how they have those pants with the little um the little stripe down the side this would be perfect for that i did a little tiny tiny piping don't know if you can see that but yeah so i did like a little piping i put them all together on the serger so a sandwich of back fabric piping and front fabric and then when you open it up it's gorgeous so that's really cool for sportswear love the piping foot and i'll show you one more this one is really cool and it looks a little intimidating, but it's not because it makes your life so much easier. This is the gathering foot. And you can see it has like a little uh, gathering mechanism under there. Um, and so basically you just take one fabric piece on the bottom and then you put your other fabric piece on top you set your settings according to, and I got to tell you, Jim, um, Tim, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Juki, uh, which we posted all the videos to the product page, the tutorials on the settings for these feet are so easy to follow. Um, so I just refer to those, but there's also instructions for each foot in the box. So it's on paper form. Um, or if you just want to watch a video, those are available online. So you just feed it through like this and it will gather. And let me find my sample for that. This is what it looks like whenever it um, comes out of the machine. It'll look like this actually. And then when you open it up, you have a beautiful gather. So can you imagine this for like a little puff sleeve? How cute that would be like on a little shirt or something like that. Mm -hmm. So super stinking cute. Okay, so the other feet that can't come in this eight foot pack, besides the elasticator piping and gathering foot that we showed is the blind stitch, which I think is really cool. I've seen it a lot in sportswear. Uh, cording, beading. So you can do like uh, sequins and things mm -hmm. with that as well. Universal blind stitch and a curved beading foot all in this nice case for you. Um, really great feet to have, a, a great accessory with your MO1000 or MO2000. If you have one of the other MO searchers like the 654, the 735, uh, we have a different foot kit available uh, for those. Um, so just click the shop link for that. But uh, this is a great foot kit to have. What do you think, Tim? I think you did a great job and, and you covered oh. all the bases on it. So thank you. Hey, yeah. I have stretch thread here too. I forgot to show y'all that. Um, if we have time. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let me see. So this is the, uh, and I actually used this for the first time recently. It's called maxi lock stretch. We sell this on our website. You use this in the loopers, not for the needles, but the thread is kind of, um, Let's see if we can, if I can show you. It's a little bit puffy, but it has a nice uh, stretch to it. So it's well, great. It looks like it's kind of thick in her hand, but it, that's the relaxed state. 
So don't think that it's thicker. It, like I said, they're like clouds. Yeah, it's really soft, actually. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. All right, so why don't you show us a little bit about your cover hem machine? Okay, great. Awesome. So our cover hem machine, we always talk about the cover hem machine, the cover hem machine, the cover hem machine, but it actually will do a chain stitch also. So you remember the sample that Barbara showed with the top stitching and she said it had the chain stitch on the back of it, it was putting on the, the, uh, the casing on the edge of that sportswear. And we talked about the dog food and we talked about the cat food the bags, that's a chain stitch. A cover hem machine will do a chain stitch. It's the same movement, but it's only using one needle. So to create the cover hem, we have to have two needles. The looper movement down below is still the same, but we're putting two needles. So the looper interacts with two needles or three needles, depending on if you would like to have a triple cover hem. Triple cover hem is very decorative look. I happen to like the triple a lot, but most people don't recognize it so much as just a regular cover hem stitch. They kind of recognize it more like a decorative stitch. That's why the most common stitch you'll find is like the ones we've been showing you with just the twin, with just two needles. However, you have to be able to fold the fabric so that you can get it to fall into the stitching. Now I'm going to show you uh, an image here. I'm going to see if I can drag my little skirt over here so you can see. So you can see here, I have a little bit of white bleed and I have black thread because I want it to stand up against the white. The white is actually a three thread overcasting edge that I did on the fabric just to give the fabric a little bit of extra body to help me get it to fold and fall into the track so I could use the cover hem. The black thread is actually my lower looper on my cover hem machine. And then on the top, I have my two needles. I'm gonna push this up so you can see the two needles. So that's what I've got the machine set for. But the guide is what really helps you. And the guide is this little piece underneath here. So this part here actually has a couple of pieces to it. It has this stop edge, which has a pin in it. And that pin actually aligns to the left needle position. That way you're not pushing out. You're not going to end up with excess fabric beyond the needle. The other portion here on our attachment is to adjust how wide you want the hem to be. So we have adjustment screws for the width and we have adjustment screws for the placement of our folding guide underneath. Now, unlike a sewing machine and a serger, cover hem machines don't really like to stitch with no fabric. They kind of rely on that fabric to create the stitch. So if I'm stitching and there's nothing there, it's not going to create any type of stitching pattern for me. So I'm safe to keep my threads off to the side here. They're not top and bottom connected. My needle threads are just underneath my foot and I can lay my fabric right up next to it so I can start my first couple of stitches into the fabric. So I'm gonna try and hopefully see that you can see I have a fold here. I have a surged edge to give me that little bit of extra body so I can push against the guide here. And I'm going to come around and see if I can't move the camera to the other side so we can see exactly how the machine is going to run to create our cover hem stitch on this fabric. So give me just a second because I'm going to do this the hard way. Hey, oh my gosh, that's awesome. So I have actually never seen that guide uh, foot before, uh, or the guide, I guess it's not a foot, it's a guide, but, um, that is awesome because doing it without the guide is pretty difficult to line up because you're looking at it from the, the top and not underneath. It's, so that's right. really, really great. I'm, you, don't know my how much of a, you don't know how much of a fold you have. So this guide underneath here is giving us the stop for that fold. So if you wanted a half inch fold or a three quarters inch fold, you know that you set it for that. That's where the stop is going to be. When you do it without the guide, you can still eyeball it, but you're going to rely more on feel and looking at the fabric rather than making it easier on yourself and having the guide align that edge for you. So you can see here, I'm all folded and ready to go. And I'm just going to tell my machine to start sewing. Eartha says, this machine is awesome. <laughs> yes, Eartha, I agree. 
So you can quiet. see here, here's my twin needle, here's my two needles. Can you see this okay? Is the light? Oh yeah, we can see it now. Okay. We'll make you full screen. There you go. So there's my twin needles on my top and here's my loop-de-loop -loop on the back. <laughs> now, you see the little tan, that's from my three thread surging, but you know what? It's all hidden. It's not gonna be visible anyway. This is the inside of the garment. So this is a great way to get that line. See, I did pretty good. Didn't miss a beat. So and you can easy. Tell here, that it really did keep its alignment because I have an even, just those tiny little loops from that beige thread underneath. It's on the shop page. Hey, um, and we asked, Tiffany already has the machine. Uh, she's oh. asking if we carry the guide. And yes, we do. If you click the shop products link in the description of this video, it is listed on that page. So wonderful. Yeah. Hey, Tim. Yes. We have, um, I want to switch back. Well, I, I, I want to show my version that I have because there's two versions of mm -hmm. this. Machine. There's the QVP and then the non QVP version. So we're going to show the uh, MCS 1500 QVP. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about the difference between the two. Okay, certainly. Yeah. So this is the one that I have set up. Two different models here that we're looking at. Let's see. We can't get a little. The there we go. Well, yours is definitely prettier than mine. <laughs> that's for sure. With all of that pretty icons on it. Um, but they look very similar. But they, yours comes with the guide. Yes. In the box with the in machine. The right. So if you're wanting the, the entire package with the guide and the machine, you're better off just buying the MCS 1700. That way you don't have to wrap piecemealing waiting for a separate package to come. Did that second package get shipped? Did it get lost? Everything comes together in the box with the MCS 1700. If you're not doing cover hem seams, you're just doing regular cover hem where you, you're comfortable enough, that's where the MCS 1500 doesn't come with that cover hem guide. And it's a good option, saves you a little money. I don't mind saving a little money every once in a while, especially if I have more money to spend on fabric. Yeah. So, Tim, thank you so much for that. We, I just see in the background, we have a special guest that just came in. Somebody who I have so much respect for in garment construction. If you're in our allbrands.com sew forum group, uh, you'll see some of her amazing garments that she creates. So we're going to bring in um, Carrie Cunningham and maybe we can switch to to talk to her together if we can both switch cameras and then bring in carrie hi welcome carrie you're muted so if you could just unmute yourself there we go hi everyone <laughs> welcome oh hi, my god Tim. nice to meet you hi nice to meet you <laughs> carrie loves juki machines I do. And we <laughs> love Carrie. <laughs> so I thought, why not invite Carrie? See, talk to her about what, what kind of sportswear stuff you like to sew and surge and, and what have you been up to? I like sewing um, leggings and kind of loungewear with my serger. But most of the garments I make have a good portion of surging in them. That mm -hmm. duster that I just recently posted, of the one with me sitting down, that's probably 99% surging. I think I only use the sewing machine to hem the cuff and to put the bias binding on, but the inside is all surged. So I so use surging so. for knits, but I also use it for wovens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It can handle a lot. You can quilt with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I have the MO. I have the MO one thousand. It's a workhorse. <laughs> yes, you can actually set it for a quarter inch, and yeah. get a quarter inch seam. Be careful not to want to cut your fabric off. But usually, we, we're trimming off fabric. But when you're doing quilting on it, yes, you can set it for a quarter inch and yep. trim just just run the fabric down the edge. You put a whole quilt together. Now there are just, some limitations, but just let it shave it is what I call it. Just mm -hmm, a slight exactly. shave. <laughs> 
So you have the um, you have the Juki HCL F three hundred. I have the no, I have the HCL F four hundred. Four hundred. That's yeah. a great machine. I, Tim, I won that machine. Oh, great! As soon, as soon as I lifted it out of the box, I knew it would be my primary machine just by the weight of it. It's a <laughs> it's a good solid machine. Mm -hmm. But I won it in a Threads magazine contest. <laughs> oh, cool. They said quilt your stash, and I, I didn't have any quilting, so I quilted a jacket. <laughs> I made a quilted jacket, and I won. I was the only garment in that contest. But yeah, I use both of these machines kind of in conjunction with each other. They're, one is sitting here, one is sitting here. I mean, they're right here. I have a little L turn that I can do and don't have to get up and move across the room for them. Do you and find that you... you pick projects that you know you can use both machines on, or do you just happen to use both machines on, on the projects that you, you pick? I like, just go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just go. I know I know if it's a knit, it's definitely going on the serger. Uh, and then it also, of course, everything depends on the, the actual construction. But um, even if you follow the instruction on a pattern, I tend to not do that. Everybody knows I'm a little bit of a hacker or a big hacker. Uh, I do most of my sleeves flat, because I know I can do them on the serger. Mm -hmm. And I just put the sleeve down with the garment up and that mm -hmm. works well to let it guide through. But yeah, I use I use both of these machines quite a bit. Excellent. Wonderful. Excellent. Yeah. Do you have a cover hem machine yet? I don't. Well, I thought about it over the years and I thought, well, I don't, I'm not in the t-shirt making business. That's That was my thinking, right? So I, I never got one. But every time I see one demo, especially this one, Mm -hmm. I now I now want that. I'm thinking, do I have room for that? <laughs> we can yeah. make space. Yeah, can make <laughs> we always make space, right? <laughs> exactly. I, I love that LCD on the 2000. That's that's nice. Yes, the LCD is very helpful. I I, yeah. know, I usually take it out of the box. The book goes one place. Me and the machine go someplace else. So they're always separated. In fact, I can probably tell you that they're all sitting in one drawer for every machine I have, and I probably have never opened that drawer in probably, I don't know, 10 years. <laughs> well, we have some amazing specials on these machines. So I'm going to bring up, we're first going to show the MO2000. Um, that is the air threading overlock serger machine. Um, oh my gosh, jet air threading. Plus, this machine has an informational LCD screen that will tell you, the machine tells you the settings to put it on, which is so nice. So this machine uh, retails at $19.99. Uh, if you purchase it from all brands, it's only $14.99. So definitely click the shop specials if you're interested in that. And we do offer financing. Um, so the step down from that is the Juki MO1000. And wow, what a big difference. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> this one is $12.99. We have free shipping on it. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's our most popular serger uh, for sure. But I think since the 2000 came out, we may be, uh, <laughs> we may have a, have a little competition going between those two. Um, I they definitely think, there, huh? <laughs> yeah, I definitely think the 2000 is going to be really, um, nice because of the, the LCD screen. So, and so those are our sergers, but for cover hem machines, uh, we have the MCS 1700 and that has a two or three needle stitch, uh, and chain stitch. Uh, it's a specialized machine. And when you get the QVP model, you get that hem guide included with it. And that's six ninety nine. And the MCS 1500 is basically the same machine. Uh, it does not come with that hem stitch guide, um, but it's it's phenomenal, and it's six only six forty nine. Great deal. So yeah. So I like the idea of the the chain stitch with the hemming guide mm -hmm. versus using twin needles. <laughs> Yes, it's that same effect. <laughs> That's got to be more accurate than twin needles because I do sometimes have a little shift in my twin needle projects, but I like the idea of that guide. 
Well, you know what? I don't I'm know, Barbara. Gonna... You might get an order from me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. See if I can take the guide off real quick, so we can take a closer look at it. Yeah, let's take a look. They'll help you understand how the guide actually functions. Remember, I said it has a couple of parts to it, and you can use them independently. One thing you can't do is you cannot open the front door with the guide on. So if you needed to open the front door, I don't know why you would need to, but if you needed to, you have to take the guide off. Side door opens with no problem. So let's, uh, let me switch cameras a second here. Okay. Hey. Will... Oh, okay. Go ahead and do that. Technology. <laughs> I'm gonna move my other little camera back up here. Perfect. Of course, I have to have Juki in the background, have to have a plug for it, you know? <laughs> so this is what the guide looks like. So here are your pins that I was referring to. And that's what actually the fabric runs against for the guide. This pin here is the one that aligns with your left needle. So if I wanted to do a chain stitch and I wanted it to be just in from the edge, I would use the center needle on the machine and I would run my fabric along the edge of this particular guide. So that's a nice way to get it. Now, you do have space limitations, but there's always ways around that. That's what the other guide piece is for, so that you can go left or right with it. These pieces actually come apart, and this piece here can be slid over by loosening it, so you can close that gap. So you can make them really fit much tighter to each other than you would normally think, simply by just having a little bit of movement there. But I like the fact that we have these two guides they're not long, so they're in the way. They're just long enough to be functional. Nice. That is really nice. Hey, Carrie, what are some of your favorite knit fabrics to work with? So I I love um, ITY knits. They're lighter weight. I love those because of drape, the way they drape. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. um, and then my second favorite is actually Ponte knits, which are actually heavier because you don't you get a little more body with them mm -hmm. but you can also get some drape in that in that duster that i did that i recently did that's ponte and it just okay. it just drapes beautifully oh, so nice. those are those are my two favorite so what's your experience with scuba because i've heard you talk about that before i love, I love scuba <laughs> <laughs> let me show you my latest scuba <laughs> Oh, I'd love to. And for those of you who haven't uh, joined us on Sew Forum, uh, if you go to Facebook and type in allbrands.com Sew Forum community, um, you can see all of Carrie's amazing uh, um, garments as well as uh, our other uh, folks that have joined us and just being creative and showing everyone their this creations. This is my next scuba project. Oh, what is that? I don't know. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of. A, I think it's kind of a snake, snake skin print. Yeah. But it's really, it's really nice. Let me hold it up straight. I think I got it at an angle here. So scuba is nice because the only thing you have to remember with scuba is most won't see everything that's underneath it, which I think is good for. Which is the same for Ponte, yeah. The yeah, only thing about like scuba is flattering. you have a definite wrong side. So if you're doing something like a high low, then you're going to see this white from the other side. Uh, but here it is on the straight. So let's have a little bit of an angle there. Oh, pretty. But it's so, and this is already, this has been washed and this is what it looks like. And this is how it drapes. Yeah, so, so many fun nice. fabrics. Yeah, <laughs> this might be a duster, I don't know. <laughs> but, it's, but it is my next scooper project for sure. Yes. I well, I can't a, wait to <laughs> serve some fun uh, loungewear for home. And uh, yeah. I love your skirt, Tim. <laughs> so super oh. cute. <laughs> Makes me want to go to the beach. And I hope that this video was inspiring uh, to everyone that watched it. And I just, I'm very grateful for you, Carrie and Tim, for joining us on the show today. No yep. So we are going to be doing our giveaway uh, soon. So everybody get your comments in. Uh, let us know uh, how you liked it. If you want another one, uh, just let us know and, and we'll dig deeper for sure. I think we just scratched the surface today, guys. Right? Oh, yeah. We have to get Tim back. <laughs> Yay, Tim, 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 for Tim, sure. the magician. 
<laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see what rabbits I can pull out of the hat next time or something. You know? yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right. I was so busy, so I came in a little bit late, but I'm going to go back and watch the first part. Oh, thank you. And I'm so glad that you could join us today. I asked Carrie before because I know she loves her Juki Emma 1000. I was like, come in in our live, you know, make it fun. <laughs> And uh, she was like, well, I have something to do, but I can come in later. And I was just so happy to hear that. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Kelly to pick a winner randomly and show that on the screen. And drum roll, please. April! Oh, it's Hi, so girl. good to see you. She watches. Mm -hmm. I've seen her in the comments time. many times. And yes. I don't think she's <laughs> won yet. So congratulations, April. Email me at events at allbrands.com and I will get you that $100 allbrands.com e-gift card uh, sent to you. So thank you everyone for watching and join us on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays for our virtual events and all brand shows and uh, to participate. Uh, that's our loyalty program because we appreciate everyone that joins us every week. So yeah, well, I guess that's it for today. Do y'all have anything else you want to say before we tune out? Not if you don't like have a surgery, get a surgery. <laughs> yes. Well, she needs a cover hem machine. And I need a cover hem machine. <laughs> <laughs> don't be surprised, Barbara. <laughs> Juking uh -oh, you. Already you already sold one. <laughs> What's that oh, mat, yeah. Barbara? I'm sorry? What's the, or What's the orange mat that you have there? This is an all brands. Uh, this is just for dampening, but it has okay. our logo on it, allbrands.com. So, okay. yeah. Um, yeah. So actually, guys, I have, I own the MO 735DE. It's a combination cover hem and serger machine. I love it um, because it just takes up one spot, but to switch over to the cover hem, takes time and like I'm doing like a garment and I'm switching from stitch to stitch and that lengthens the time of the garment which I think if I had to do it over again I would definitely get the air threading serger with a separate cover hem because you could just go back and forth from one to the other and not have to worry about re-threading and setting your stitches for it so that's my that's my takeaways for this live. Right. <laughs> well, there's no reason you can't get a cover him also. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I should just we both need one. With my, there you go. With my MO735, which I absolutely love that machine. It's phenomenal. It just takes a little bit more time. So if I had to do it again, I would get to uh, yep. two separate I have machines. I'll tell you, so. um, Saturday, I went, I was with my daughters for Mother's Day, early Mother's Day, but my daughter asked me to come early to him to alter pants for two young boys that were going to prom. So I went that morning and I missed having my surgery with me <laughs> when it was time to trim off all of that stuff mm -hmm. because these pants were, they were, I think they were Garrett polyester gab. They were fraying like crazy. So I had to oh. switch to a zigzag stitch. Oh. And, and I'm like, I don't even know the last time I did that. It <laughs> felt like it was taking forever. <laughs> I was making the stitches longer and wider just to get it done. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we do get spoiled when we find easy ways to do things. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Easy okay. and faster. <laughs> oh, Tim, we had a question earlier in the video that I forgot to ask. Somebody okay. asked if you could baste a quilt with a chain stitch. I mean, it pulls out, but I don't know. I would say no, because you end up with a fair amount of bulk on the back side from your chain stitch. Yeah. Got it. You okay. Know, you're trying to baste a quilt together. You're just wanting stitching to hold it. So I think if you're going to baste it, you're better off just running it through your regular sewing machine. Unless you're like a friend of mine and she does her TV time by hand basting. No. <laughs> no. That's my, that's my comment. No. <laughs> that's a four letter word. No, 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 no. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> Yep. Actually, I get really lazy. I throw it on the frame and I just based it on the frame. Hey, Tim. That's um, easier. <laughs> Carrie missed our magic trick. Should we show her? I can do one too. Okay. Before we tune out. All right. Hold on. I'm going to come back to my, um, to my spot. All right. So. 
<laughs> so before we tune out, we got to show you our magic trick, OK? OK. Ready? All right, so this is my fabric that I have. And this is my skirt. All right, and then. <laughs> Oh, we like to have fun. That's too funny. <laughs> you were expecting right. something real, weren't you? <laughs> That's the best pool I've seen yet. <laughs> well, with that, I just want to wish everyone a magical day. And I hope that this inspired you to go out and, and uh, surge some sportswear and be creative. Yeah. So. All right. Well, thanks, Carrie, and thanks, Tim. Thank Hope to see you again soon. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 -bye.